Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining in. I'm your host, Mike Coat. Join us every week or two as we continue to draw closer to the Lord through stories, historical figures, Bible studies, and more. Again, this uh, these five episodes coming out this week are based on uh, my sermon, Love Becomes. There's a link that you can uh, find that sermon if you haven't heard it. And that sermon is largely based on the last episode, episode 10, which is Irina. So these five devotionals are based off of Irina. If you haven't checked those out, please do. Um, And you can check out more information by going to our website, salvationandstuff.com or salvationandstuff.simplecast.com. And with that out of the way, let's uh, dive into today's episode. So in the story of Irina Sindler, we see this picture um, of her standing up in clear contradiction to the zeitgeist of the day. Um, when she was uh, you know, 13 years old, when she was in high school, and when she was in college and throughout her adult life, she was opposed to the zeitgeist. The zeitgeist, as, as we learned, is a German word. And it means the defining spirit or mood of a particular period of history as shown by the ideas and beliefs of the time. The uh, Zeit means time and Geist means spirit. So it is the spirit of the age. And Irina was in clear, you know, thankfully she was in clear opposition to that. Um, Check out this definition of zeitgeist from Wikipedia. It says, The zeitgeist is a concept from 18th to 19th century German philosophy, meaning spirit of the age. Now check this out. It refers to an invisible agent or force dominating the characteristics of a given epoch in world history. Isn't that Wild, it refers to, quote, an invisible agent or force dominating the characteristics of a given time in world history. Um, The Bible speaks a lot about this invisible agent or force that dominates characteristics of a given time. Actually, the Bible has a lot to say about this. Um, and it never paints the picture really in a in a good light. And so I just want to sh- share a few verses of what uh, the Bible says about um, this zeitgeist and um, what it is and how are we as Christians supposed to um, stand in relation to it. Now, before we open the Bible, there are some, uh, typically those who deny anything supernatural, they can be called atheists or materialists, but they deny any existence of a creator. Uh, they believe that people produce the zeitgeist, that the zeitgeist is whatever people collectively make it. And on the other hand, there are others, usually those who believe in a higher power of some sort or a supernatural being or beings they tend to believe that the zeitgeist produces the people, or at least they're open to that concept, that the collective becomes whatever the zeitgeist makes it. And there's probably some truth to both of these points of view, but let's look at some verses in the Bible to see. So in the epistles of John, 1 John 5, 19, John just straightforwardly says that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. Uh, It can't be much more straightforward than that. But we also see uh, numerous other places. Take, for instance, um, in Luke chapter 4, we see Jesus being tempted in the desert, in the wilderness. And um, Satan says to him, um, he says, I will give you authority over all these kingdoms and all their glory. For it has been relinquished, relinquished to me and I can give it to anyone I wish. And Jesus uh, doesn't dispute that. In fact, later in John chapter 12, um, Jesus, when he was speaking about his, uh, his death on the cross, he says, um, now judgment is upon this world. Now the prince of this world will be cast out. 
Um, furthermore, in John chapter 17, when Jesus was praying for his disciples, he said, I am not asking, uh, he was speaking to his father, I'm not asking that you take them, my disciples, out of this world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Uh, Paul, in the book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 4, he says that we are living in, um, in this present evil age. Again, Paul in uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, he, he describes um, that there is a ruler uh, of the kingdom of the air, and he's the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So knowing this, knowing that there is a connection between these verses and our present day zeitgeist, uh, what are we to do? The Apostle Paul offers some sound advice in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. He says to put on the whole armor of God. He's speaking uh, metaphorically. Uh, there's an armor that God wants us to put on ourselves. And why do we put it on? Well, he answers that. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. That is what Paul believed about how they were supposed to respond in regards to the zeitgeist then. And until Jesus returns, I don't think anything has changed now. But again, this is only a five-minute episode, and there's tons to discuss. So I'd love to hear your thoughts if you have any. Um, but pray this prayer with me. Uh, Lord, um, let us not be swept away with the spirit of the times. Uh, protect us from the evil one. And help us to put on the whole armor of God so that we might not only stand against darkness, but stand for light and the kingdom of your son, Jesus. We pray this in his name uh, with thanksgiving. Amen. Thanks again for tuning in. Hopefully you can uh, tune in tomorrow as well. And we'll see you then. Thanks. Bye-bye.